two things. I think it's the yeah, me two things. And me two things. And right now what I need is to add an event button on clicked. I will function call a function and I will actually call the function function name. That's it. And normally if I click there, hello, how are you? Me too, thanks. Uh, I guess so, um, because I'm, I'm getting asked why does the size of the text matters? Because I'm adding a new line every time I'm adding a line there. So if my text was only this big, you wouldn't actually see. It's getting added, but as it's a, a small text, you are not seeing what what is beyond it. And so if I'm putting it at a big size again, it gets displayed. That's probably why Jan was warning me about the size of the text. And so yeah, a, a nice way of using an instance variable uh, to reduce the number of events and object types you are using. Because I could, I could go on and add any kind of function uh, like uh, yet another and uh, this is yet another function or yet another line and from the moment that you are adding a new instance of your button and that you're make making sure that you are changing the name right there I will just copy because I'm getting lazy right there so yeah no, no quotes though when you are uh, filling the um, value of a text uh, variable instance or global yet another it's working it's pretty cool I could indeed I could do also oh yeah instead of yet another I will be doing a clear button right there with a clear function clear this mess and right there I will rename the function clear and actually change so that we set the text text to nothing and there you need the quotes using just the quotes like that means you will have uh, an empty text so right there clear this mess boom and me two things how are you hello blah 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 clicking click 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 clear okay I will save this one yet again and button instance function Okay, here it is. And that was it for the instance variables. And now I will go back to the local variables and improvising yet uh, again another example. Uh, well, I have a few things to explain though on this one, so I guess it will work quite nicely. So here is yet another new project. And the difference between a global variable that you can add right there and an instance variable, a local variable, my bad, uh, I will put it actually in a group. It's easier. So I'm making a group, just group, it's my group. And right there, if I'm trying to add, I will be adding global already. Okay. So I will move it under, and moving can moving it under will make so a local variable. So local variable can either be number or text as usual. Uh, it can be a constant too, 
and static. We will see of also a bit later what this means. But one important thing about the local variable is that uh, actually if I had uh, some events out of the of the group itself, they wouldn't have access to this variable. For example, if I add an event there and I'm trying to compare a variable, you see that I don't have any variable accessible. Whereas if I'm adding it as a sub event right there, compare variable, I can compare it right there, but I can't there. It's out of the scope. The, it's limited to the event or in that case the group it's being added to. So this means that you can use local variable as temporary variables that won't spill or spread in the the rest of your event sheet and will allow you to get your to keep your variable list right there a bit cleaner. And uh, um yeah. So that's about the the scope. Uh, it's a uh, it's a bit tricky to to get at first, and um, to be to be honest, I've used it especially in in complex cases actually, when you needed to do some string manipulation or stuff like that. For example, I can test one. Um, what should I do? Yeah, I will test this. I will make a text box. I will make another button. And I will add a function too, because it's a nice way of using it. I will just delete everything. I will make a function on function get word um, mm -mm, and the word will be clicked I will call function get word and add a parameter text box dot text so here it is and I will add a blank, blank sub event right now, add a local variable, and I will name it word length right there. And so my first action will be to set the value of word length to len function dot param zero yeah forgot parenthesis here it is so when I will be calling my function get word uh, once I, I will be clicking the button I will put a word or a sentence or anything I'll click the button the button will call the function get word it will pass as a parameter as param zero the text of the text box and I will keep in memory right there in the local variable word length the current length of the word I'm passing so check it out a word of course, I have not put any display, so for sure it won't show us much. So, yet again, some display. And right there, I will put it this way set text to word links. <coughs> Excuse me. So, it's better word okay so I have six letters in my word I 
And so once more, if I was to try right there to, yeah, n n that's what I will do actually. Um, system every tick to show you once again because I'm having question on the chats about the scope. The, the scope is kind of the range if you want. I don't know if it's a good uh, use of the word though, but the local variable right there, my word length, is only accessible to the um, sub events of the function itself. Like right there, if I'm everything trying to set the text right again to word length, you know, I haven't access to it. It's not available because it's the same this event, the event number four, system every tick, is at the same level than the function. And so it means that this variable right there is not accessible, it's kind of not even existing anymore, if you want. Whereas here, it is existing. And I could add, like, all that levels of sub-events, and yet, yeah, right there, it would still work. Eight, eight letters. So I could have a few, uh, any kind of conditions and conditions and sub-events, etc. It's okay, but right there, I'm out of the of the level, and so it's not accessible anymore. Another thing too is that this variable there will be resetted every tick, which also means that I went with a, a, a wrong example there because the function is only this this function is only called on on a button on a button click, so it's kind of temporary. I could uh, I could go on. A yeah, I will. I will do like that. I will actually change it when cha on text changed right there. I will be calling the function, and the function will at each time change. So I'm changing the number of letters right there. And so it follows. It goes, it goes along. Every time the text is changed, it will call the function and uh, and uh, change the text. Yeah, we only have one person on the chat at the moment. I'm just feeling pretty pretty lucky. <laughs> I don't get what you what you mean, Jan. You can show that you can create the same variable on a sibling event, but not in the scope. Um, what do you mean exactly? Like if I was changing? Oh yeah. If I, well, a better example, I guess it. I will move just there. The um, text, the this uh, this sub event, and put it there. And I will have a warning to tell me that, oh, uh, it can't be moved because you are referencing to a local variable. And the local variable is not accessible there. But I could actually make an, another, I, I could, yeah, I could actually create another word length. And then move my event. And it will, it will work. But in that case, this one and this one aren't the same variable. I think that's what you meant, Jan. You will tell me in 10 seconds, but I guess it's uh, what you meant. And if I'm, I will just have a bigger, yeah. It's overriding because it's the last event. So every tick now, I am 